I arrived here at Columbia State Hospital after doing 10 years at Atascadero State Hospital. The conditions and the treatment down here at Columbia State Hospital are so poor that we as a body decided to go on strike because we can't get medical treatment, we can't get assessments because there's no psychologist or psychiatrist here to do them, and the ones that are here are were told not to do them. And the doctors that are here will not give us proper medical treatment. That When turned around and called for a strike, I was willing to volunteer as to show that we have a voice, and I was willing to go on a hunger strike to prove the point that we are not mental patients, but we are human beings. And because they said we have no rights, I decided, along with a number of people that have went on strike, to say, well, let our voice be heard. So I decided to go on a hunger strike, and I was willing to go further, but they only called for 15 days. To this day, we still can't get treatment. We're still not having any type of team to do any assessments. Can't get medical treatment in which my third and fourth vertebrae on my lower back is going out and pinching my nerves to where I can't get sleep at night. And they're refusing to do anything about it. Though I went on strike and went without the food as well as liquid, and every once in a while I might have a juice, I had so much pain because it seemed like the pain increased in my back and in my lower legs. And every time I lay down, it was so excruciating that I was going three to four days without sleep. But I was willing and happy to do it, in which now the administration is starting to take some type of voice to say, okay, let us listen to you guys. And because of the media, which I thank, and because of people out there voicing their voices in our behalf, Sacramento sent a new director here, a troubleshooter, who's trying to do something about it. But yet, through the Department of Police Services, known as DCS, people have been beaten up, people have been put in the hospitals, people have been put to face charges to cover up the corruption that's going on in here. All we can do is stay together, be peaceful, don't get violent or anything like that, but show that we are in coherent to what we are doing and we are standing up for our rights. The only other thing that I can say is I pray that there's people out there that are willing to care. We know that we've done wrong. We know that we're here because of the wrongs that we have done. And so I take the time to take a look at myself, the time that I did in prison, the time I did at the Tascadale, and I try to look back and see why I did the things that I did. But the biggest thing that helped me is not trying to blame others, but looking at myself and forgiving not only those that done wrong to me, but asking people that I've done wrong to for forgiveness. This has opened me up that a lot of the anger and bitterness I had is gone. I try to do everything through what the law says, studying the law here through the law books, through the other people that I'm getting together to learn what I can so every time that I go to court, since I'm now pro per in my case, the judge granted me a DNA test which can prove my innocence, and yet I'm still here because the district attorney, Dean Felipe, won't do nothing about it. But I'm still being patient. I'm still trying to go along with what's going on in here to try to bring about a change so that we can have the rights that are due us by what the law says, by what the commitment says. If there was treatment, I would go to it, but there is no treatment. According to doctors like Dr. Palladino and others, this program is not set up to treat, to cure, to ever let you get out. You are here until you die. And this is what we have to go to, that the DPS officers say, because of what you did, you got no rights. Doctors were ordered to sit back, don't take care. People have literally dropped dead from not being treated. People have had heart attacks. People have cancer, thrown up blood, and still were not treated until it became critical. And so I see Columbia State Hospital is only here as an extermination, just like they did with the Jews when they just exterminated them just to exterminate them. I also look at it as during the different war wars we had, because you were Asian or you were German or whatever, they would just gather you up and lock you up and say that this is to protect society without even knowing the person. I don't make bones about my arrest. I don't make bones about the way I was brought up, nor what I went through to the orphanage, because that doesn't matter. What matters is what I'm going to do now 
that's going to change my life, change it for me, change it for my family and my loved ones out there. Because I'm the one that has to change. These people don't want to help. But I will say I thank Father Muskella for getting the Thinking Skills program going, which helped a lot of us because it dealt with turning away from recidivism and learning coping skills as well as to think before you act. Look at all the consequences. And yet the Department of Mental Health says that none of that applies. Everything that we learn to better ourselves does not apply because they are not here to let us go or to help us. And so we fight this battle every single day. And even when Sergeant, I forget his name, but he turned around and said that as far as he's concerned, he will make sure we never get out. Mr. Groom, a social worker, says that he took the job to guarantee us never to get out. And so I have to take what they say and just let it ride because there's nothing I can do about it. I am just one of over 650 people in here. But we're trying to bring people together so that we not only can get a voice, but get something done to where we can get treatment, to where we can get assessed to see whether we have or have not have a mental problem. And if we have a mental disorder, that we can get the treatment for that mental disorder. But as far as they're concerned, it's NOS across the board. There is no treatment set up. There will never be any treatment set up. I thank the time that I have to bring this out, and I thank the 22 people out there that are waiting for me, praying for me, and supporting me while I'm here. And I thank this chance to talk on this station and hope that somehow there will be somebody who's willing to hear and willing to just open up to say, you know, what's wrong? Why are we wasting $200,000 a year for one person when we don't have nothing out there for kids' programs, for after school programs, for education, and we're constantly being put in debt when they have other programs to where it costs only twenty five dollars to $30,000 per person a year? that where people can benefit, learn to change, learn to deal with the problems, learn to find out what the problem is, where it started, and then bring a solution about to where it's no longer a problem. And I feel that by doing this, we as the people of California, as well as the lawmakers, wouldn't be wasting all this money just to keep people locked up, just to exterminate them, but bring about a change to where they can turn around and change the individuals. We may not, under the new laws, be able to go in certain areas. And this has to be, so be it. But we can be able to be productive members of society in other areas. And that's all I'm asking to give a chance so that I can be able to do something for my family, for my children, for my loved ones. I'm 56, and I ain't got much. But I know I can do something that society would be proud of as well as my family, as well as the change that came about in me, because people are willing to look beyond my faults to see what I can become and are willing to help me. The Department of Mental Health doesn't want to do it, but I think the number of church groups, the number of people that come to visit, the number of people who say, well, I don't care what you were there for. I just see what the change is happening to you now. And this is why I'm willing to stand up as an American citizen with hope. That they can never take away from me. They can never take that joy because I got a family who loves me. I got my twin daughters that say, Daddy, come home. I got my son getting ready to get married, and he wants me to give him away. And so even though I'm not there, I'm there in spirit. I'm there with my love for them. And I thank God that they have not been in trouble. No harm has ever come to them. And I thank those that are there to help them when they need somebody to talk to because I can't be there. And I know that someday I'll be able to be out and be able to stand up and thank the people and to show that I'm not the same person that I was, but I'm a changed person.